Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to stick to Durham and this is a brewery who I've filmed two reviews for but I think you guys have actually only seen one on the channel so far but I thought I would do their kind of summer beer today for you. So for this one we're going to return to Durham Brewery and today we're having a taste of the Smoking Blonde. So this one is a smoked gold nail and it comes in at 6% ABV. The last beer you saw me review from these guys was the, the Beach Chalice and I did film a review of one of their beers imperial stouts as well um, but you've not actually seen that video yet so I will put that up at some point in the fairly near future but I wanted to get this video out there in the meantime just be aware that I will be telling you lies in that other video when I tell you it's my second review from them so yeah should be a really interesting beer this one I've had some good experiences with the Durham Brewery so far and hopefully you guys enjoy my take on this one so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting of course just fast forward all the usual links are in the description Below, that's the brewery website linked to my other reviews that I've done from Durham Brewery before. Like I say, there will be more in the near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city or state, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the English beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about Durham Brewery then so as I've told you before Durham Brewery were founded back in 1994 by Christine and Steve Gibbs both of whom were working teacher uh, as teachers at the time but they soon left their jobs to focus on the brewery and who can blame them to be honest but in the early years Steve developed a, the white range of beers which proved to be very very successful and in 1999 they sold their original 5 BBL kit and installed a new 10 BBL kit in a new premises. So they first started bottle conditioning their beers back in 2000 and then they had a rebranding in 2011 and also opened a bar at the brewery site as well and over the coming years they continued to expand and they accelerated their 20th anniversary in 2014 and they upgraded their brewery equipment once again the following year in 2015 and today in total there are six different people working at the brewery and they are quite prolific. I believe it's about 15 or so regular beers that these guys have doing as, are doing as well as you know various seasonals and things like that and you know the beach chalice are really enjoyed that one the imperial stout that I, that I tried was really nice as well it seems so far from what I've gathered from their beers so far their high ABV ones tend to be really quite nice but this is one of the first eh, kind of lighter ones that I'm actually reviewing for you and I've heard that this is another good one this was one of course that I bought at Market Hall Wines in Durham as well and Mike there was saying that this is a really really nice beer so I'm looking forward to this one and eh, that's all you really need to know about the brewery for just now so if you want to learn a little bit more about them check out their Facebook page and their website in the description below and you can keep up to date with all the latest goings on. I do need to take a little drive out and take a look at the brewery one weekend as well, but of course if you drive, you can't drink the beer, so that is always the problem. But yeah, all the links are in the description below, and let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself. So yeah, standard Durham Brewery artwork on this one. They've always got this nice kind of creamy colour. Uh, and you can see there's the Durham Cross. Of course there, I think that's the Bishop's Cross if I'm remembering correctly, um, but you can see smoking blonde there, it says on the side here, uh, this ale is bottle conditioned, there's live sediment, we don't really need to know about that, oh no, it's smoking blonde's on the other side, so it says this was brewed to celebrate our 21st anniversary, golden with an aroma of oak smoked peach derived from the use of citra hops and oak smoked wheat, a full velvety mouthfeel with soft marmalade bitterness, more smoked peach in the body and a kick of coriander, and this one apparently is brewed with citra hops. From what I gather, it was saying that on the, the website that they use citra hops in this, but this one is in Bowburn, eh, which I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, is just to the kind of southeast of Durham City Centre. But plain bottle cap on this one, some of the beers do have the cross on the top of them as well. But without further ado, then let's get it out and get on with the tasting. As I say, this is one I think that they release every summer, but it is their 21st anniversary beer, which is pretty cool. So that means it would have been produced first back in 2015. So probably one of the ones that they christened their new brewery equipment with. i tell you something, you can smell a little bit of that smoke as you open the beer up. But yeah, look at that. That looks really nice. If you've watched the channel before, you will know that I absolutely love smoked beers. My whole love of beer started with the Bamberg Rauch beers when I went over to visit my friend Daniel in, in Bamberg over there. And, you know, it's just it's been a mad journey ever since then. But as you can see, nice pale golden chocolate. If I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see there is a good degree of transparency to it. There's a solid finger and a half. I would say of a perfect white head on that one. It's not even creamy or anything. You can see little tiny bits and bobs of sediment floating around in this one. As it's 
side on the bottle, there is a little bit of sediment in there, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there but overall you know it does look very very nice so let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on oh yeah so the smokiness on this one is definitely more of a kind of meaty smoke I would say but there's a nice bit of bready character to it it's definitely got a little bit of white bready kind of wheaty note to it but the, that smoky note is meaty Good little bit of kind of caramelly brown sugar as well, I would say. Yeah, definitely some caramelly brown sugar in there. Not too much, it's more of a kind of biscuity caramel, I would say. But the smokiness is lovely, it smells really, really meaty, this one. You can smell a little bit of a kind of fruity quality to it. Like I said, I'm sure they use citra hops in this one. And Mike was actually telling me that um, this beer, last year, people were complaining that it wasn't quite smoky enough, the 2017 version, so apparently they've really upped the smoke in this one for the 2018, for the 2018 recipe, so hopefully it will be a bit of a beast. But yeah, a little bit of kind of grassy and floral note in there, I do suspect, going from the aroma, I do suspect there's a little bit of German hop in here, just by the way, there's a little touch of that earthy character and the way that the floral notes are coming out, I do wonder if they've used a little bit of a German noble hop to kind of, um, as the base hop for this, which would suit it, of course, if you go and think about these smoked beers from Bamberg and Bavaria, Franconia. So yeah, I reckon there's a little bit of a German noble hop in there as well as the citra hops, if the citra hops are indeed still in there. But yeah, nice meaty smokiness to this one. Um, it's almost a little bit bacony, but not quite as sweet, if that makes sense. So as I say, a little bit of that biscuity caramel note as well, some white bready notes too. But um, overall, a nice smelling beer, this one. It smells really fresh, but as I've told you, I might be a bit biased with this beer because I absolutely love smoked beers. So yeah, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma before you get stuck into it. But let's have a taste of this one now. So this one's the Smoking Blonde from Durham Brewery in Bowburn, just to the kind of southeast of Durham itself. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, Skull. That's interesting. Yeah. It's not quite as smoky as I thought it was going to be. I'll say that about it, but the smoke, it tends to come out a little bit more in the aftertaste, I would say. Yeah, I mean, it's different from what I was expecting. But I have to admit, I do like that. The smokiness is quite subtle, but it really... When you're at, when the beer is kind of coming into your mouth, you don't detect the smokiness that much. But there's a nice sort of... Um, it, it comes out a lot more in the aftertaste. That's where a lot of it's coming out, this one. And it's, just, it's a completely different approach from these German Rauch beers, of course. I've had a couple... I think I'm sure I've had... Uh, a beer from one of the breweries over in Poland as well that was Viking Pills and it had some of the smoked malt in it. I'm sure they were using the Rauch malt from Bamberg rather than the smoked wheat that's in this one. But this is nice. You know, by no means, if you're expecting something like Schlenkerla from this beer, that's not where you're going to get. This one is just supposed to be a nice kind of easy drinking beer with that kind of touch of smokiness to it because I mean I know a lot of people that try these Rauch beers can just be sort of overwhelmed by the palate so in a way you know this could be a good sort of entry beer if you like for the Rauch beers if that makes sense but it's a nice summer beer and you know I have to admit when it comes to Weizens and some of these Rauch beers and things they can make you feel really full so if you love the flavour of them but just know you can't drink as much then this is one of the ones you want to go to and as I say that Viking Pills beer that I tried from Poland. I can't remember what the name of the brewery was for that one. Um, but it reminds me a lot of that beer. If you go into my Polish playlist, you'll see a beer called Viking Pills, and this beer reminds me of that quite a bit. But yeah, I probably will be buying a few more bottles of this just to have over the summer. It's really nicely done, that. So well done to Durham Brewery. 
I need to review some of their other lighter beers. As I said, I've mainly focused on the, the stronger ones now, but I've got this one specifically because it's a smoke beer, and I love smoke beers like I was saying. But yeah, malt base on this one is really nice. You can feel a little bit of that kind of pale malt, sort of bready thing. You can feel that just blanket in the middle of the tongue. A little bit of thicker wheaty character on top of that. Right in the middle of your palate, you can feel that nice sort of smoky quality to it. Um, it's not quite as meaty as it is in the aroma. As it progresses further and further into the aftertaste, there's a little bit of a meaty quality there. You can feel a little bit of a kind of biscuity sweetness coming out of the beer as well. But yeah, I just like how everything goes together in this. This is quite a subtle beer, this one. And I'm sure I said the same about the Bead Chalice as well. It's the, the Durham beers seem to be really subtle in all these little components, and it is more about how all these flavours kind of uh, blend together. And this beer is no exception to that. It's all just about how things kind of blend together. As I say, a little bit of pale malt, thicker wheaty notes on top of it, a bit of the smoky quality as well, some slightly sweeter biscuit note, biscuity notes. Back corners of the palate, there's a little bit of earthiness. As you come further forward along the sides of the tongue, you can feel it's a little bit more floral than round the very front curve of your palate. It's a little bit lighter and grassy. And as you go further and further into the taste of this beer, the smoky elements, that slightly almost meaty smokiness, just starts to come out of the beer a little bit. I'm, I am do wonder if they've actually used citra hops in this because it's, it's to me, it's not coming out. The fruitiness isn't coming out quite as much with this beer. There is a little bit, if you just go behind the front curve of the tongue there, you can feel... There is a little bit of a kind of citrusy note to this beer. Normally with a citra, of course, you would get a little bit of a mango or a lychee or something like that. And, you know, in fairness, there's maybe a wee touch of, like, a... It's not quite a gooseberry, but something similar to that. You can feel that just behind the front curve of your tongue there. But I do suspect there is a bit of German hop in this one, just because of the way the earthiness is. The German noble hops have that little earthy quality to them. Then you've got a nice little bit of a floral aromaticity as well and it's just the way that the kind of floral grassy components of the hop in this one are and um, I do suspect there's a wee bit of German hop in here but it's a nice beer that's like I say an ideal summer one if you like the taste of these Rauch beers but you want something that's just a little bit lighter then this one's definitely a good beer for you to try and um, in terms of the mouthfeel then I would say um, mid-bodied on the lighter end of mid-bodied, right enough, carbonation is moderate, it does have a little bit of crispness to it, a little bit of an oily mouthfeel, um, malty qualities to this one, it's got a little bit of sweetness, but overall the malt base is quite smooth, a little bit of hoppy dryness to it as well, and some a, a very little bit of uh, juicy fruit as well, which is, it's, the fruity character in this one is quite minimum, but going into the aftertaste, it's a little bit of that wheaty breadiness that sits there, and some of the smoky character as well, but overall, a really nice beer, definitely a sort of easier drinking version of a smoked beer than you're going to find from the likes of Schlenkerla and things like that, which is a good thing of course for the summer. But I'm glad that I got to try this one and I hope you guys have enjoyed my take on it. So yeah, a big thumbs up to Durham Brewery for this one. The Smoking Blonde 6% Smoke Gold Nail. They've done a nice job of this and I do need to have a go at some of their lighter beers before I finish up in Durham in the summer. But once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Check out my social media. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Durham Brewery as well. And I'm sure I will be reviewing some more from these guys uh, before the summer is out. So keep an eye on the channel for those and I will catch you guys very soon. The Smoking Blonde, a, smoking, a smoked gold nail at 6% ABV from Durham Brewery in Bowburn, just to the southeast of the city centre. Slander just now and I will catch you guys very soon. Cheers.